there really are only two people in your life you really need to impress. That's eight-year-old you and 80-year-old you. Eight-year-old you, we remember being eight years old and being asked that question, what do you want to do when you grow up? And looking back on your eight-year-old self, would they be impressed with what you're doing now? Would they think, oh yeah, you're doing what you should be doing. That's really cool. I love what you're doing right now. And for many of the businesses I work with, many of the leaders I work with, that's absolutely the case. They do feel like that because they've made a leap. And for many of the people who don't feel like that, they've yet to make that leap out of the mundane thing that they feel that they must or should be doing into the thing that they really know they want to do. I've been working and talking to a CEO recently who made that leap out of a day-to-day contractor, had a great idea, thought, hmm, maybe there's a business here, and did, and made a leap out. And everybody told him at the time, this is a stupid idea. What are you doing? You're giving up a regular income to start something new. There's no pension. There's no income in there. What are you doing? And the side of that, not only was he happy and his eight year old self would have looked at him and gone, wow, that's really fantastic. Look at you. What are you doing here? You've got a great life building something that really inspires people. But he got a lot of backlash on that journey from other people who, again, couldn't see themselves in what he was doing. Maybe they were envious. Maybe they were jealous of him in that particular situation. But he faced a lot of backlash and a lot of people saying, what earth are you doing going and starting your own thing? That's a crazy idea. Why are you giving up security for uncertainty? And the reality is, is what he was giving up was boredom for something much, much more exciting. So he'd impressed his eight-year-old self. And the other person you've got to impress is the 80-year-old you. And that's the person sat there looking back on their life and saying, did I leave the life that I wanted to live? Did I have the connections with the people that I wanted to live? And this is the one that I deal with most often. This is for the CEO who's working 60 hours a week, whose relationship at home with their spouse is failing with their kids is failing. They're not seeing their kids. I worked with a CEO recently and, you know, her marriage was on the rocks because of the hours that she was spending on the business. The business was her number one priority. And that was ridiculous because, again, her prioritisation was all wrong. We dug into it. Of course it wasn't. Her spouse and her kids were the number one priority. And in putting the business first, actually, she was harming everybody around her because she was doing 60 hours a week, not really focusing on the things she'd be working on. She would really kind of lost touch with her inner self about what it was she wanted to be as a CEO, why she was doing it. And of course, that meant she lost touch with her loved ones around her. So again, imagine yourself as 80 years old and looking, looking back on your life. Have you got the personal relationships that you want right now? Is the business doing the things you want it to be doing right now? Another CEO, CEO I work with right now as well works for a large, big, large enterprise here in the UK. Very successful business is doing extremely well. But it's not having the impact outside of straightforward shareholder value that he would really like. And it took a long time to really unpick that, that feeling of, well, what's missing from what you're creating here? Yeah, sure, you're generating a lot of money for shareholders, but is there more to it than that? And we started to unpick the meaning of shareholder value, really. And yes, ultimately, part of it does come down to money, but shareholders are humans too, and we're all living on the same planet with the same challenges. And so unlocking what shareholder value could mean, we started to look at, well, what could this business do much more for the community that it operates in? What could it be doing much more for its employees and their families? What could it be doing for the, for the, for the globe, for the planet, for the world that we're living in? You start to unlock a different meaning of shareholder value. You start to unlock a far greater impact as a leader by unpicking that particular phrase, shareholder value, and redefining what value means to shareholders outside of dollars and pounds and euros, you start to see a greater impact for you as a leader and for you as a business. Now, me as an investor, on the other hand, I'd love to see that much more, is that the organisations who are really trying to do something better for humanity as a whole versus the ones that are just trying to generate a return. So again, looking back from that, you know, being 80 years old, that CEO is going to have a much stronger view of what they did. In just generating money, sure, great. They've got created a legacy in terms of financial legacy for their kids and for their grandkids. But what else have they created in terms of setting an example for those kids and grandkids, setting an example of the world? What actually have they shitted in terms of the needle for the humanity as a whole? And that's the most interesting thing as a CEO is you've got a huge amount of impact. And I, I'm, and that impact is almost certainly not being used in the way that it could be used. The potential for that impact is far greater than it could be for you in terms of everything that you could be doing with your to increase the size of your impact as a leader. So if you want to understand how to increase your impact as a CEO, just drop me a line and I'd love to talk to you about it. Thanks very much.